doctors, my name is Noah Ho, and I work for a company called Sahara Group. We're in the energy space, so we have a bit of power, a bit of oil and gas, some upstream, some downstream. We have storage, retail facilities, and a bit of retail, uh, real estate as well. We're what I would call a global company from an African perspective. So although we're in Africa, we're out in Europe, we're in Asia, and some of Africa as well. So we're spreading our wings. Well, um, we started current business now being Sahara. Uh, Sahara started in 1996. Uh, three of us, two partners and I, uh, started up a small trading company uh, that was trading in oil and gas products uh, out of Port Harcourt and selling them to the US at the time. And that office started in a place that was uh, um, committed to by four space. In other words, it was just slightly bigger than a cupboard, but in the right address. We needed to have an address in Victoria at the time. Uh, NNPC was just around the corner so that we could get to where our clients were, uh, where our major customer was, and all of that. And we had to be a bit ingenious as to the way we uh, began the business. We were very young at the time. Uh, I think I was, we were 27, 28, there was uh, my partner at the night when we started. So we were extremely young and we had to figure a way how you would compete in a business that was one, dominated by foreign companies and two, by people who were much older than you were. So it wouldn't make sense coming out to say that you own the company or that you were the managing director or director or any of, anything big. So as far as we were concerned, we were staff of the company, so we call ourselves staff, representative office, and so on and so forth. So we created a way that would allow us to get in uh, to offices, no titles on our, on our cards, so nobody knew who was who. All we had was a name, address, and we decided to do great business. I think business at the end of the day uh, is the same across the board. You need to have a clear determination and focus as to what you want to do. Uh, you must have an idea of where you're going, so that will uh, capture passion. But you must have integrity. You will see what you believe you can do, and you will do everything to ensure that you keep your promises and what, uh, what you do. Um, people, people are very important, so employ the best. We, for a long time, one of the things that we always used to do would be to sit down and employ people who we believe were more intelligent than we were in the things that we wanted to do. And I think that still remains the case. I'm surrounded by extremely intelligent people. They know much more than I do, so I just take the shine. You know? <laughs> but at the end of the day, you must, you must invest in people. You get very intelligent people. Um, look for a niche business. Even in your business, if you know what, you, what you're about, you will see things that nobody else, you will see things that, things that nobody else would see. But I think challenges would happen all through. So the challenges we face then are totally different from what we face now. And when you look at challenges, always look at them as opportunities are actually it's a way to go. Uh, when we started, one of the greatest challenges that we faced then was starting as very young people in a business that was dominated by old people, for example, and starting in a business as Nigerians that uh, had primarily foreign people uh, doing it and both of them returned to our advantage. In the first instance, uh, very young, we came up with ideas and styles that uh, an older generation of not have been able to think of and, and, and so we brought a freshness into the way we were doing things. We went into places that traditionally people would not go into uh, because there was a way and style with which they used to do things. So that, that changed. Um, coming in as long before indigenization and uh, local content and all of that, we started doing local content a long time before that. So one of the things that we had to do was start playing that sentiment that look, we're Nigerians and all of that. We can't do this business. It's been traditionally done by foreign companies. Give us a try and you will not regret it. So we had to create an awareness that Nigerians can do the business and we opened it up. When we started, there were maybe two or three other Nigerian companies in the business today. Uh, I think we opened it up. Over 100 people have come into this business now and then. So, Recently and currently, what do we see as new challenges and all of that? First of all, you get older, how do you bring in fresh people into your business? How do you regenerate? How do you create a new 
uh, a new way of doing business? How do you make things that look old now new? And so we have to constantly keep uh, creating and going into new areas of business and that's helping us. First of all, if you have a fear for failure, you shouldn't be in business. So understand that you will go into business, you will fail in some instances, but everything you must learn from. And we've learned, we've learned a great deal. We've learned a lot in the recruitment exercise, how you hire, who you hire. We've learned a lot even in the type of people, how long do you keep people, how do you motivate them. Uh, we've learned a lot from that. What type of businesses should you go into? It's not every type of business that you will succeed in. So we've learned to focus on where we know our skills. You will see all sorts of business, you will get all sorts of opportunities coming onto your table. Um, in the past, you will want to chase after everything. We've cut out a lot of waste and just focus on exactly what is important. And some of these have been costly, uh, costly mistakes, but over time, We've learned from all of that. We've learned what it means to what type of auditing and auditors to get, for example, when to come in, lawyers, what type of contracts you sign. There's so many things. It's a wide thing. But just understand that everything you do and everywhere you go, you learn from every single day. Each day must teach you something. One of the things that we, one of the things that we came to a realization uh, very quickly was that we are from. I call myself. We are from the analog age. You know, we are from the age when moving from analog to digital, from digital to social media, still gets us lost. That's me. But we realized one thing uh, very quickly as well that the world was moving very very quickly, and that you needed to find people who understood how to use the media, social media, and all of that. So we went balistic in looking for very young people that understood it and could work that way. I knew a time when we started business when it was very important right, to follow your documentation from table to table and all of that. Emails and all you, you needed to carry a physical document from one table to another. And within 15, 16 years we have seen that change completely. There is still a place for personal interaction, but a lot of things are also pushed through uh, documentation, through emails and all. Now, so we have new people who are coming who understand that. I have a, I've been a, what's the word, almost a reluctant entrant into the Facebook and the uh, Twitter, Twitter realm. But I found out that one of the things that you do need, if you need to pass a message, is that you need to have you need to have social media as a very good platform to send out a message and that's what I've started to do. So I found myself on there sending out messages more from a personal perspective on my views and views that I believe that people need to hear and I push it out to Facebook. One of the first I started interacting, one of the like mentoring and just interacting and talking to people, talking to young children, people in university and all of that and I found out a lot when we came looking for jobs especially. And one of the things was that they would want to come and work in Sahara. And you'll find that this, uh, just so many people like an employer. But when I start speaking to them, I find out that they have huge passions for other things. But mentally, our society had kind of taught them that the only way they would succeed in life, get to university, get your degree, come and work for another company and if you're going to get a degree, make sure it's architecture, engineering, lawyer, the law and things like that. You know, I'm, I started feeling that we were losing a whole generation of very talented people who were coming, sitting in offices, looking miserable, hating their jobs, but really wanted to go out and be a cameraman, be a sound man, be a, a, an artist, uh, poetry, and things like that. I found so many people like that. So I then discovered that one of the ways to do this was to start telling them that it was okay. It was okay to express themselves. It was okay to go out and find that talent that they would actually be happier. It was okay to forget all about this. And if you did that, you will you will make it. So creating, so I was talking one on one, and then I found that it became necessary to then set up a platform that would go out to do this. So hence I launched that the name my project in 2011. Now in London that's in Lagos, Canada Lagos is just one market. Lagos has a lot of people coming in and talking to you about a lot of these things. And the rest of Nigeria is sitting down there waiting. So when it was happening in Nigeria, everybody felt that human beings didn't live there. 
anymore. And we felt alienated by the rest of the country. Yes, no. And I felt I felt it would be a crime to let the people of Kaduna feel alienated by the rest of Nigeria because of a few uh, society ills that are not their, their fault. So we went to Kaduna, found people in a small village in local government there, took them out, got them a farm, a big farm, taught them about entrepreneurship, how to move from just subsistence farming into uh, into entrepreneurship, being entrepreneurial as farmers. And we're going through that process right now in training the farmers. And one of the things that we learned earlier, and I did, and my partner said, is just look at yourself, and if you feel that you are everything that they have painted us to be, then you are filled even before you started. So I refuse to accept that we were corrupt, I refuse to accept that we were failures, I refuse to accept that we were lazy, I refuse to accept that we could not do what they said we could do, I refuse to accept that we cannot manage huge resources. We just refuse to accept those things. And we believe that first there was no fear, no boundaries, no limitations. Once we believed that about ourselves, it became easy. And so going into a country and all, when, once you get into that country, you open the doors into the country. First of all, the curiosity allows them to, what are you doing here? Why are you in this country and all of that? And that's enough. Once that curiosity opens that door, then who you are comes out very, very easily. Because if you believe in yourself, then there's nothing you can't attain. And so we have no boundaries. No country is suffering.